of your day to discuss our proposed uh, flood mitigation project along TRIPS run. Currently, we are at the 35% design stage. Um, that means, of course, the plans are still in development, and so various aspects of the project are still being refined and are subject to change uh, between now and the final design. Before we begin, I'd like to inform everyone that this meeting will be recorded. Uh, the recording and presentation will also be posted on our project website, a link to which can be provided to you upon request. <clears throat> so over the course of the presentation this evening, we'll be discussing the project's background and goals, as well as introducing the current design and explain to you some of the benefits and impacts that we hope to get out of this project, as well as discuss some of the next steps as we move forward. So to provide some background, the Bel Air community was developed back in the late 40s to early 1950s, uh, before storm, reg storm water regulations were uh, introduced back in the 60s and 70s which had restrictions on building within the floodplain areas. And so based on these regulations, if this, uh, this area were proposed today, um, a, a good number of the houses would not be able to be built uh, based on those regulations. The, the flooding of Trips Run and the surrounding community is being driven by a few different factors uh, as areas of Fairfax County upstream of this community uh, developed, they became more impervious and with that uh, prevented stormwater from, from infiltrating into the ground, which instead concentrates into uh, runoff, which enters into the stream. This issue is being made worse by uh, heavier storms that we are seeing at a higher frequency and ultimately this channel is <clears throat> in a, inadequately sized to handle the amount of, right. of Look, water volume exactly. that, that is fall, uh, flowing through it. And of course leads to uh, flooding of the surrounding area and damage to uh, private property and public infrastructure. <clears throat> so the photos on this slide so, uh, show the area around Holloway Bridge Holloway Road Bridge and the corner of Dushill and Barrett Road back in July 2020 when we saw a particularly heavy uh, rain event that led to some flooding of, of the surrounding area. And so we, we enacted a, uh, a study to kind of analyze some different approaches that we could take on uh, mitigating the flooding in this area. That study was completed in December of 2020. And ultimately, <clears throat> we decided to pursue scenario number three, uh, which was chosen to strike a balance uh, between achieving project goals while avoiding uh, some potential limitations of funding and minimizing the overall impact to the community. The current project limits extend from Annandale Road downstream to Sleepy Hollow Park with a length of about 2,600 linear feet along trips run. This work will ultimately be a combination of flood mitigation and stream improvements. The area uh, highlighted in yellow in this image here shows uh, nine properties that were acquired by Fairfax County uh, under a voluntary basis. Um, these room, these homes were at uh, particularly high risk of flooding, and so we needed to <laughs> create some space to provide storage for additional water <laughs> with the goal of lowering the water sur surface elevation and reducing the likelihood of um, future flooding and damage to property. So getting into some more detail regarding the proposed design. 
on this screen, you, should, uh, you can see a yellow line which represents the limits of construction activities with the bridge at Annandale Road serving as the starting point of this project. Uh, the anticipated construction activities in this area occur primarily within the stream channel and would include reshaping that channel to provide a more uniform cross section, which should help to promote better flow characteristics through this area of the stream. Grading for a floodplain bench area, which would provide the additional storage previously mentioned for that stormwater, would begin on the Fairfax County, uh, the, the parcel owned by the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors, shown uh, outlined in red on the screen. As we move downstream towards Holloway Road and Sleepy Hollow Park, improvements in the stream channel would continue. And uh, the area currently occupied by those nine properties that Fairfax County acquired would ultimately be excavated to provide that additional storage. This would, of course, <clears throat> require that the houses on Barrett Road be demolished, as well as the removal of Barrett Road itself and the utilities serving those, um, those nine homes. Any, uh, any utilities that serve other homes in the community would be relocated as needed, and that, coordination, um, that relocation would happen in coordination with the relevant utility companies. Um, the bridge between Holloway Road and Barrett Road would also need to be removed in order to accommodate this construction, which would, uh, of course, create a dead end uh, at, at the end of Holloway Road. And so we are required by regulations uh, to provide an area for emergency vehicles to turn around in, in these cases. And so we would be proposing to build this uh, turnaround area on the, the county owned parcel on the north side of Holloway Road right here, um, shown highlighted in pink. So here we have a, a cross section profile of, of that same area near where Holloway Bridge, Holloway Road Bridge currently is. Um, the yellow area represents that, that excavated area I, I spoke of where we are intending to provide some flood storage. The depth of this excavation would be up to, to eight feet in some areas. Um, now, there is an existing sanitary sewer main <clears throat> that is currently underneath Barrett Road. And so that is providing um, or creating a, an additional constraint on how deep the, this excavated area can be while still maintaining uh, the appropriate cover over that sanitary sewer. Um, and how much we can we can adjust the, the horizontal location of the stream channel. And so because of the difference in elevation between these two areas, um, the bench and Holloway Road, we would be proposing a retaining wall shown highlighted in blue here. And ultimately this, this approach would serve to reduce flood elevation by providing a, a much larger area for water to, to spread out across, which would in turn lead to the water surface elevation rising a bit, a bit more slowly and giving areas downstream of, of Holloway Road more time for that water volume to pass through. Continuing downstream towards Sleepy Hollow Park, the grading for the excavated bench area would, would begin to tie back into the existing ground and the project would transition to transition back to work primarily within the stream channel as we get onto the park property. And ultimately the, the improvements would terminate within Sleepy Hollow Park. To discuss some of the impacts, the, the construction activities will 
be occurring within county owned easements on county owned properties and within the VDOT right of way. However, additional easements may need, may uh, may be needed on some properties in order to provide access and some additional grading and staging purposes. We anticipate to have some more details about any potential easements by October. Uh, the construction site would be accessed uh, primarily through through the neighborhoods with several proposed construction entrances one of which is located on Dashell Road and one of which located on Holloway Road where the current bridge is. Once that bridge is removed, we would anticipate using Barrett Road for, um, for additional access near the intersection with Coffer Road. So here is the proposed access on Dashell Road. You can see coming in off of Annandale Road, we would then uh, enter into the stream channel at the end of Dashell Road. And <clears throat> we would currently have some staging areas along Dashell Road within the, the limits of construction. For the other proposed construction act accesses, um, here we have the access on Holloway Road with a potential staging area on the Board of Supervisors property where that turnaround will ultimately go. And once construction activities have progressed to a point where the bridge needs to be removed, uh, the access would then be transitioned um, potentially to again, this intersection with Barrett and Coffer Road. And the staging area would be adjusted accordingly. <clears throat> so on this slide, we can see a few photos that show really a, a conceptual uh, bird's eye view of the area around the nine homes that are set to be removed. Um, this area will ultimately be um, replanted with some native trees and other vegetation to try and bring bring this area back to a much more natural condition. Um, the, the proposed vegetation plan is still being developed and so what is shown on screen is not necessarily representative of what would be in the final design and any replanted areas would of course take um, take some time to develop into more mature growth like you see in other areas along the stream. So one, um, one other consideration for the design would be uh, some of the tree removal that needs to take place in order to construct these improvements. Uh, a total of 479 trees were surveyed, which had a diameter of 12 inches or greater. Um, 142 of which are currently proposed for removal as part of this design. The trees that we remove, we strive to reuse throughout the site to the greatest extent we can. Um, and the extent of that tree removal and reuse will be refined as we move forward through the design process. And again, one of the last steps in construction would be to replant any native trees and other vegetation throughout the site. Here you can see some examples of those native plantings that we uh, commonly use in our projects. Um, because the plans are still being developed, the plants shown on the slide may not be representative of what is included in the final design. As far as next steps, uh, we will be holding additional public meetings as the project progresses into the, the next design phase, which would be our 65% our design and beyond. <clears throat> and as we move into the next phases, any discussion of easements uh, would occur at, at that time. Uh, currently, we anticipate having a complete design uh, by spring of next year, so 2025, uh, as well as the anticipated demolition of the homes that we 
that were voluntarily acquired by Fairfax County along Barrett Road. Um, we would anticipate having that done by uh, late spring or summer of, of 2025 as well. At, at this point in time, the construction timeline is still yet to be determined. And once we have that complete design, there are a few more steps that we have to go through um, before we reach that construction. Um, a, uh, we would be going through a bidding process, the permitting process, and then once construction has been complete, we would be uh, monitoring the site for um, things such as, as uh, the vegetation taking hold and, and other uh, aspects of the project for a one-year period. Um, once once we have concluded this meeting, if there's need for any additional information, uh, my contact is in, uh, my contact information is in in this slide, and um, would be would be happy for anyone to reach out with any questions they may have. And with that, um, our presentation is over, and would like to open up the the rest of the meeting for anyone to ask any questions or provide any any input as as they feel um, they would like to do.